Uh, dear participant, I welcome all of you for our second uh, technical session. Uh, that is uh, hydrophonics, cultivation of culinary herbs. Or Sir Bhaskar Rao, sir, he will deliver this uh, lecture. Sir, please. Yeah. And now you can continue. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was I just got disconnected for a moment. Yeah. Should we start, Dr. Raja? Yes, sir. I have already uh, given the instruction. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah, uh, good afternoon uh, again for the second session. Uh, what we would like to discuss in this uh, session is regarding the cultivation practices of herbs in uh, passive hydroponics. Okay, when I'm talking of uh, passive hydroponics, I mean uh, growing them in a grow media. Like it could be cocopate, perlite, or rock wool, or sponge, or any other grow media, inert grow media, other than uh, direct water. Okay, so herbs, let me talk about herbs. The herbs are basically used for seasoning, for garnishing, savory. It's used basically for culinary items. So my topic, I would be concentrating more on the usage of these herbs in our day-to-day -day food preparations in garnishing or in seasoning. These herbs could also be utilized in the pharmaceutical and the cosmetic industry. So let's not get into that. Let's talk of something more uh, relevant to this uh, present uh, scenario of lifestyle changes and uh, eating habit changes towards more of uh, westernization and also regarding uh, the influence of uh, uh, the climate. Uh, thanks to COVID that uh, there is a lot of uh, importance given to herbs these days. So let's talk about it now. So the market size, let us talk about the market size of uh, and trends of, uh, uh, of the herb market. See, the global herbal medicine market is expected to reach around 411 billion US dollars by 2026. You know, that would be 8.5 percentage CAGR. And the market for medicinal plants in India is around 4.2 billion rupees. That was in 2019, and it's expected to be around 38, I mean, 38 percent increase. Say so it would be around 14 billion rupees by 2026 in the next three to four years. It would, you know, nearly uh, quadruple itself to 14 billion rupees in Indian, in the Indian market. So, uh, why do we say this? That uh, let thy food be thy medicine. The World Health Organization estimates that around 80% of the population of some, you know, our Asian and African countries presently use herbal medicine for some aspect of primary health care. And food is the next major source for serving the nutritional needs. But with growing modernization, some traditional ways are being given up. So efforts to monitor and regulate traditional herbal medicine are underway. Ayurveda, the traditional Indian medicine, remains the most ancient yet living traditions. 
I'm just giving you a background of this, of this medicinal plants and herbs and their importance in the world scenario, especially with the Indian context. So the herbs, what I said, is generally used for culinary purposes, means for food. See, nowadays people are using it for garnishing, for seasoning, for any sort of uh, Indian or continental dish. It could be a, it could be a pizza, it could be a pasta, or it could be a normal uh, upma or any sort of uh, other Indian breakfast items. Also uh, for other dishes. In general, we have got a few of the herbs. These are a few of the herbs which are used in as a as a food item and which are quite uh, commonly grown but few of them are not grown commonly and they would be the best to grow them uh, in hydroponics so we will be concentrating today basically on rosemary sage thyme oregano dill so these are the few uh, herbs that are used in abundant they have a huge medicinal value of course, people do use basil, coriander, and other mint and other things, bay leaves commonly. But I will concentrate today basically on these four items. And I will give you a brief description of thyme, how thyme is cultivated in hydroponics. And the same could be repeated to rosemary or sage or oregano or the, the, same, the same system of cultivation. See, when you're talking of the food pyramid, uh, just to give an idea of the raw food pyramid, you know, the leafy greens are the foundation fruits and they eat generously. They eat in, in large volumes, in large quantities, as salads or also as, uh, as uh, cooked food. Then you have the fruits, uh, then you have sprouts, then you have nuts. So our uh, herbs, the herbs what we're dealing today, herbs, microgreens and juicing grasses. Juicing grasses are basically wheat grass and barley grass. Microgreens, we will be discussing about it tomorrow. Now the herbs, these are termed as medicinal foods in the raw food pyramid. So the raw food pyramid, these items have to be eaten sparingly. They are not eaten in volumes because they're used only as a garnish or as a marination. And this also includes seaweed and the nutritional yeast, of course. So these are the foods that are to be uh, utilized sparingly for uh, general health purposes and also for the taste. See, I'm just giving you a picture. These are live pictures. I mean, uh, pictures of the farms that are, we are growing these uh, items here. Uh, this you can see here is uh, the, uh, the oregano. Okay. The next is thyme. This is the English oregano. This is the English thyme, which is a very small leaf. This is the rosemary. Okay. This is the sage. And this is the basil. So we have got these growing in greenhouses, climate controlled greenhouses or it could be grown in normal greenhouses whereby the climate is, ambient climate is good. It is between um, maximum of 28 to 32 it can take. 28 will be the best climate uh, with the humidity or around 55 to 65%. And it is grown in cocoa peat grow media, which is the best media as far as uh, cultivation of hydroponics is concerned. Uh, these grow media, is fed with nutrient rich water. We call it fertigation. Irrigation, we mix the fertilizers in the irrigation and give it as fertigation to these crops. They are given also based on the recipe. These pots or containers that contain the cocoa peat to grow the crop has a drainage hole. Okay, Every pot has a drainage hole or every trough or every grow media has a drainage hole in the bottom. So these are all connected with pipes beneath and the water, whichever is drainage coming out is collected and reused it is collected. Then it is goes into the filtration system. Uh, it is, goes into filtration system. It uh, stabilizes its pH, EC and uh, extra whatever uh, nutrients has to be dosed. It will be dosed through an automated, small automated system. It doesn't involve much, uh, big uh, uh, machineries. And then it goes back into the fields. Now, talking about rosemary, um, you know, it has been associated with memory. Rose, rosemary is associated with memory from the ancient times. Uh, Carnosic acid is a component in rosemary. So each of these uh, herbs has some uh, phenolic compound. So these phenolic compounds and flavonoids uh, help uh, uh, in 
medicinal purposes if eaten sparingly. So we have got, uh, you know, lots of, uh, you know, uh, free radicals, etc., which, you know, helps in protecting brain and Alzheimer's disease and they are full of antioxidants, basically. Sage, sage, uh, the word itself shows that it's called wisdom. This is also used for um, Alzheimer's diseases, okay? Uh, it contains an enzyme called uh, acetylcholinesterase, uh, which uh, improves the cognitive functions of the brain. It also helps in digestion. It helps in, uh, in crubbing hot flashes, etc., and other symptoms in, uh, in women's health. So these are uh, two or three of the, of, the, uh, of the herbs that I would be concentrating. But my main concentration will be on thyme. I would like to specify only on one particular um, herb uh, for today, which will be thyme. Uh, it's a small perennial herb. It is perennial, okay, some shrub. And it is uh, what somewhat light green in color. It is used as a ground cover. It doesn't grow tall. So you can grow them on your windowsills. You can grow them on any, um, any area, any area whereby you don't have uh, to, you know, uh, occupy larger spaces because it's not having a very straight habit. You know, as and when the plant uh, matures, the stems become woody and hardy. So you will have to keep harvesting the young shoots as and when the few shoots are ready. Otherwise they will start hardening. They're very small leaves. The basic uh, plant uh, anatomy is in around 2.5 to 5 mm in length, very small. Uh, they are covered with the small uh, layers of hairs, depending upon the cultivar. And uh, each of its uh, different species have a different type of scent. Thymus vulgaris is the one which is most commonly used uh, uh, in uh, culinary purposes for food and also for medicinal purposes. Uh, the leaves uh, don't have any stalk. Okay, Margins are curved inwards and highly aromatic. They are highly aromatic. You just need not to even touch the plant, if you just pass by the row, by the thyme uh, uh, greenhouses or the thyme field, you will get the smell of the thyme, the fragrance of the leaves is a result of an essential oil, which gives it the, fav the flavoring value for the culinary purposes and also for you know medicinal properties. So uh, when you're talking of the, crop, um, of the crop physiology and the crop pathology and the crop anatomy, the flower terminates, the flowers terminate the branches as in, into whorls. So it is either blue or purple or white in color. Flower is bilaterally symmetrical. There are five petals, sepals in the flower. Okay. The petals or the sepals are fused in a cup or a tube with four stamens. I'm just giving you the anatomy of the flower. The fruit is dry but does not uh, split open when ripe. Okay. So you don't have, uh, this is usually uh, propagated uh, in general. Uh, in the farms, it is propagated uh, vegetatively. Uh, the seeds are also available and uh, for large farms initially you know they do it with seeds and once they have their mother plant ready then they start uh, propagating it from the hard uh, semi-hard woody, um, uh, woody uh, stems for their propagation materials see the power of the seed they are able the able to have a power of germination up to three years uh, the seed so they have a, a long uh, life um, the cultivation, as I said, you can see a grow bed beside, okay. Uh, this is a grow bed. Uh, the land inside a polyhouse or inside a greenhouse is uh, given a gradient. The land is given a gradient, a slope, a small slope, so that the drainage water flows to the end, okay. Uh, the bed could be a grow trough, a one meter grow bed or any other uh, pot or anything you could uh, consider. What I considered is here a grow bed for commercial purposes. One meter wide grow bed, okay. It is a uh, grow bed made of uh, uh, polycarbonate sheets, okay, flexible polycarbonate sheets. It is having a depth of around 20 centimeters, okay, 20 centimeter depth. That's the enough for the root zone. At the bottom of this bed, uh, we place uh, gravel, a one centimeter gravel, gray or black, whatever color you could choose, one centimeter gray gravel size, is put at least one inch thick. This helps in drainage, okay? So above this gravel, an insect net, a thin insect net is placed. You know, the net which you use in for um, your net houses, the same, the same net. So on this net, 
cocoa peat is soaked, perlite is mixed and spread evenly on this bed. So then you put drip lines or you could put uh, emitters or whatever type of uh, irrigation system or fertilization system you want to install. So drip lines of eight liters per hour, that is the specification because you need not uh, do frequent irrigations. We do eight liters per hour so that the uh, uh, cocoa peat will hold all the moisture. Uh, drip lines are laid at 30 centimeter spacing and the seeds are broadcasted. Okay. So this whatever uh, excess water is drained through this net. So you don't have any sort of uh, cocoa peat um, jute or fiber material entering into the gravel. And from the gravel, the water is naturally filtered and goes back because there is a drainage. It goes back to the drainage tank through the drainage pipes. So you will not have any sort of uh, uh, physical con uh, contaminants available in the the water okay then you have uh, the grow media see cocoa peat 70 percent and perlite if you would have perlite is a uh, expanded uh, rock wool type of uh, uh, volcanic material which helps in aeration and also helps in retention of moisture if you're putting only cocoa peat then you know at one point in time uh, because you're growing a perennial crop maybe the uh, the cocoa peat gets uh, into a clogging it, 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 it becomes like a big uh, Clawed, so that perlite helps in uh, uh, proper aeration. Sowing is by broadcasting. Uh, once you broadcast, you have to keep the surface wet by additional uh, hose pipe showering on the grow bed until you have your crops uh, germinated. Crops like oregano, thyme, um, and uh, dill, basil, parsley, uh, all these are grown in this method, except for rosemary and sage. Rosemary and sage uh, seedlings are raised because they're having a bigger seed. Seedlings are raised and uh, uh, they are transplanted. So need to raise seedlings in the nursery. Uh, mint is propagated basically by cuttings. This could also be grown in normal pots, in Dutch buckets or in foam buckets, any media, anything which holds the root zone. So when you're talking of uh, yield, uh, when you're talking of yield under irrigation, Normal irrigation, thyme will yield you around uh, say, uh, 15 tons of plant material per hectare per annum. And the oil recovery rate, this will this is for the medicinal purposes in, 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 uh, in large fields, uh, 0 to 1%. Uh, under dryland conditions, the yields may be con considerably different. But in hydroponics, you can consider to around 4 to 5 kg per square meter per harvest. And this harvest is repeated every three weeks. So every 21 days, you keep repeating the harvest because it's a perennial. You can keep the crop for at least uh, three years and see and uh, maintain the, uh, the crop uh, growth by constantly you know, giving it proper fertilizers and proper, if you can take care of any sort of uh, repellents, if you could uh, use any sort of organic seaweed-based or plant-based repellents to keep away the uh, pests. So this system of growing is uh, will yield you will give you lots of yield, which could be marketed to the local supermarkets and grocery stores, or to the hotel industry or to the horeca industry, which will you know fetch you better prices, uh, rather than uh, supplying them to medicinal or pharmaceutical district, which requires huge volumes of production, large grow areas to get you that tonnage. Because once you get into the pharmaceutical or uh, medicine industry or the cosmetic industry will have to have uh, huge uh, you know uh, dry matter okay the biomass should be good so that you have to extract the oil from any of these herbs so that would be a very big uh, uh, operation but for hydroponics and for culinary purposes you could target it to the local market um, the growing parameters uh, in general for all the herbs you know, the seeds generally sprout within 14 to 20 days. You see the guys are leveling the place um, at 21 degrees Celsius, okay, for optimal growth. Uh, direct sowing near the grow trough for grow pot containing a blend of cocoa peat with perlite, as I mentioned, 75%, 25%. It should be in full sun, of course, with uh, depending upon the harsh conditions of the, of, the, of, the, of the state where you are, of the place where you are. 
Here in the Gulf, we do it in the greenhouses because the light intensity is around, is very, very high. So we cannot be, uh, we cannot afford it to do outside because it'll be scorching. Uh, the pH will be between 5.5 to 7. Okay. You can look at uh, the pH of 7. Uh, so that will give you a very good level of, uh, you know, uh, alkaloids in the herbs. Uh, EC of you know, 0.8 to 1.6. It's a low feeder. Uh, so you'll have to have only nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium with high nitrogen. It can be used to increase vegetative growth. Plus, you know, uh, because it is completely um, a closed circuit, you are not going to lose any of those NPKs that you have applied into the soil. So the chemical contents when we talk of uh, thyme, uh, thyme is vulgaris oil and extract content thymol, okay. It is a monoterpenoid phenol, okay, uh, which is a derivative of all these things, isomeric uh, and all this stuff. You know, this is um, very technical, but it is having a, it contains thymol, okay. So thymol is the basic uh, ingredient, uh, which is used in uh, the pharmaceutical industry. It is morally antibacterial, antifungal, and antioxidant also used in the uh, medicinal industry and also for the cosmetic industry. So, uh, you know, in the University of, of uh, Minnesota, they conclude that, conclude that hydroponically, hydroponically grown herbs have higher 20 to 40 percent greater amount of aromatic oils when compared to herbs grown in conventional fields. Okay. Why I, I tell this is, you know, um, because of, uh, uh, you know, we could control, we could control the fertilizers, we could control the climate, we can control the biotic and abiotic stress, okay? So if you're giving it a little of uh, stress, then the plants uh, increase, increase their uh, aromatic compounds, increase their AI, increase their thymol content, for example, thyme. So that will be giving you a greater uh, amount of uh, the percentage of thymol in thyme. It could be triggered into production of more essential oils with the correct blend of nutrients, utilized at the correct time, of course, and also, giving it a little of stress. When you give stress, you will have uh, some sort of uh, flavonoids and all uh, developed in the crop. Uh, the uses of thyme, it is used against uh, bronchitis, uh, whooping cough, sore throat, colic arthritis. You know, it is generally used for all sorts of uh, uh, small ailments at home, like diarrhea, bedwetting, movement disorders, or intestinal gas, parasitic worms, infections, and skin disorders. It is uh, also used as an antibacterial against Salmonella and Staphylococcus. Uh, antiseptic and tonic properties of thyme make it useful for tonics in the immune systems. Okay, it helps in uh, the immune system to fight immune systems, especially fungal infections. It also helps in um, fighting asthma, hay fever, and is often used to treat worms in children. Okay, thyme is the basic blend usually used for um, uh, in the pediatric industry, uh, pharmaceutical industry, basically for children for stomach upsets and for uh, cough and cold and asthma and all this stuff. It's also used for ringworm infection, athlete's food and other infection diseases and also skin diseases. So it is said to aid digestion of fatty foods. So when you are inculcating, when you're adding or when you're garnishing your food with herbs, it could be thyme or rosemary, sage or whatever in your dietary uh, uh, in your dietary habits, and that would help you in getting more immunity or better health, especially during uh, these uh, COVID times. Uh, there is a huge, uh, uh, you know, uh, talk about herbs that are helping to fight or at least to increase the stamina. I mean, to increase the immunity or to have some sort of uh, secondary diseases, um, you know, uh, far away from human beings. See, the pruning and harvesting of packing. See, when you're talking of uh, harvesting, it is very essential that uh, you keep pruning the crop. If you don't prune the crop, pruning is nothing but harvesting. If you don't prune the crop, then the crop gets hardy. So it allows you to carefully harvest without killing the plant. You should not go down and in a cut because you'll have to have uh, it growing every, uh, harvesting every three weeks, it is a perennial. So it helps your time to grow more vigorously and produce more flavorful foliage, okay? 
So you have to establish a proper pruning schedule. Just do not cut the whole plant together at one go. You know, lack of pruning could cause your stems to become woody. If you're not pruning it properly, they keep becoming woody and it will not produce any newer leaves and stems. So uh, the pruning is a very important uh, agronomic operation for all herbs. Um, and also cutting off the old woody stems of the thyme is recommended if you want to keep your plant healthier and bushier. So when the plant becomes very woody, just need to cut it off so that you have new flesh coming in, new flesh of growth coming in from your plants. So once you harvest the crop, see, uh, it, is, um, it is packed in boxes, it is packed in containers, depends upon uh, the logistics or the market where it goes. If it has to go to um, exports, then this is the type of box that you see. Okay? Uh, it is um, covered in a plastic uh, food grade breathable plastic bag, okay, plastic bag, and this plastic bag uh, sits in a box, a carton box, which has perforations and holes for, for breathing, so that there is some sort of uh, oxygen getting into that. And uh, there are other packing methods whereby you could uh, present it to your local market or to your supermarkets in your local uh, community. So it's done uh, depending upon the pans, upon the demand. It is usually done in clamshell container, plastic containers like this. Okay, these are not, uh, of course, biodegradable containers. They are packed as, uh, as this. And uh, what you can see picture here is uh, uh, the packing which uh, I was uh, doing it in, uh, in Bahrain before uh, my stint here in Dubai, I was in Bahrain. So this is a place whereby you can do such sort of packing for any sort of herbs. It could be rosemary, sage, thyme, oregano, basil, anything in such containers and place it on the shelves of the uh, supermarkets. There is also another very um, significant, uh, you know, uh, selling of herbs, which is done as live herbs in pots. So they are sold as live herbs. It could be also mint, it could be also cilantro or parsley or dill or any of the herbs. So this, what happens is you have got a grow media inside in this uh, pot. It is grown in your greenhouses or in your farm, and then you supply to your supermarkets. So the supermarkets uh, would always love to use these because uh, these are picked up by um, houses or homes whereby they could use it over a period of time. It's not like it's not like this packet. So you have to buy it and use it uh, within a short period of time. In this case, you can have it uh, growing on your kitchen shelf or on your windowsill so that you can be getting fresh herbs on a daily basis if you do not have a bigger space to grow. And the newest of these trends is to keep these such live herb pots on restaurant tables directly on the tables. I've seen it in many places, even in India and everywhere. They have got the herbs directly or live on the table. So the chef just, when he serves uh, the food, he just cuts whatever herb is required to be garnished or whatever uh, uh, you know herb you would like to have. It could be mint, rosemary, sage, thyme, or whatever you would like to have, depending upon the cuisine, he will spread across. So this is one of a very um, promising area whereby you get a premium price for your product. So before concluding, let me also get back to the, you know, the, I was talking about stress. When you give your plant stress, you know, it, uh, it develops this uh, secondary, uh, the secondary, you know, uh, you know, the metabolites, okay? The secondary metabolites get stronger when you give it stress. Primary metabolites, okay, uh, is the physicality of the crop. Okay, that is fine. So when you give it a stress, you get the same. So when you have the secondary metabolites getting more active, then you have a higher level of whatever um, flavonoids or whatever thymol content. So these will help in increasing, and this could be done in a small area in basically in hydroponics. In the field, it is very difficult to do. If you're talking of uh, huge fields, in hydroponics, very very easy. So this is the most biggest advantage of growing flavorful, tasty, and very, um, you know, uh, a very nice material that could be used for seasoning, for garnishing, in culinary uh, dishes for herbs, which is being supplied to all uh, restaurants and hotels and cafes, and also in the supermarkets. So this is where we stand regarding the herbs. 
So I think I have uh, closed it uh, quite fast today, uh, now for this session. So I would like to take uh, many questions now. I would like an interaction from all the um, uh, participating uh, members, students and other entrepreneurs. So please uh, fire me a series of questions so that we actually understand uh, uh, you know uh, whether by whatever I'm saying is uh, getting through, or we need to make some sort of uh, changes to uh, my presentations in the next time. Yeah, Dr. Raja. Uh, sir, uh, I'll just uh, unmute uh, everyone. Yeah, uh, uh, there should be a series of questions. I'd love to. Okay, have sure, questions. sure, sure. I think my colleague, uh, Dr. Velluru Bhargav, he will handle this uh, question and answer session. Ah, okay, very good. Very good. Okay, I'll unmute everyone. Dear participant, if you have any questions, you can type it or you can directly unmute and you can. Uh, hi, uh, my question is regarding you know, rooting you know, of the stems of rosemary, sage, and all, uh, you know, uh, in the context of uh, hydroponics. You are muted and you can... Okay. Yeah, uh, it is um, it is similar to um, any other crop which you grow in the in, in any of the nurseries. There is no specific uh, there is no specific uh, protocol that you have to follow for a uh, to raise a nursery of these herbs. Uh, only thing is that when you're talking of a bigger cereal herb like a, like a rosemary or a sage, you need to put them in a grow trays, in smaller grow trays using cocoa peat media to raise them. Or you could do it in a potting uh, in a in a potting media or a chitty media, and then transplant it into the main bed. I've seen uh, yeah, I've seen a question like plastics are used in circulate water in hydroponics. Does it risk cancer? Right. See, we are talking of uh, of plastics. People, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yes, audible. Some background voice, some people, I think, are muting. If I start, they're starting uh, muting okay, and then okay, the right, background right. noises come. Yeah. So, these plastics, uh, usually people use uh, normal plastics which are available in the hardware stores. So, these plastics are used only for the drainage purposes. So, these uh, plastic pipes are not to be used for hydroponic cultivation. I've seen them everywhere, uh, especially in India. That you know, people are using these plastic pipes, which are used for drainage and for plumbing purposes. The plastic we use is PPE, it's called polypropylene. Okay, it does not leach plastics. It is FAO USDA approved plastic, uh, which does not leach microplastics into the solution because the hydroponic solution contains nutrients. So there will be a chance of plastics leaching from these pipes which you buy from the hardware shop. So plastics do not uh, uh, raise a risk if you're using the proper plastic. The next uh, question is the best object for future cultivation they mentioned. I mean, crop it might be. Best crop for future cultivation of uh, hydroponics. It, yeah, it, uh, it depends. First, you have to decide on your market. It depends upon your market. And there is a market for all the crops. It's not that you have to stick only to when you talk of hydroponics, people talk of lettuces or leafy greens. No. Yes, sir. It is more than that. It is beyond that. And hydroponics is beyond organic. I always mention hydroponics. You people always keep asking, is it like organic? Okay. I say hydroponics is beyond organic. So whatever you grow, uh, if you have a market for that crop, so you'll have to produce that crop for that particular market. And you need to produce only premium crops because you are investing big money initially. So you'll have to have premium crops, uh, exotic crops that have that could be marketed to your local. That is the object. Um, I, I mentioned about the stress. You know, it is like um, uh, uh, hello, hello. 
Ashok sir, yeah. uh, Ashok sir, uh, can you mute yourself? Can I ask? Hello. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, you can ask. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Mike, Hello. Mike yes, sir. Myself, Dr. Ashok Kumar, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, doctor. Uh, actually, as far as our concern, most of cases we are we are particularly growing leafy vegetables in hydroponics. So, is there any scope for growing another type of vegetables? Suppose any fruit type or any. See, when uh, see, let me tell you, when you talk about hydroponics, what comes into your mind? What do you think of when you talk of hydroponics? When anyone tells when anyone tells you hydroponics? Yes, hydroponics. It is uh, without soil. You... Most cases. Exactly. That's yes. very clear. So you are very clear with your idea of hydroponics. So when people when they talk hydroponics, they think of only that pipe, whereby there are a few plants growing and it grows in water. That is hydroponics, active hydroponics, a type of hydroponics whereby you are using NFT, nutrient film technology, to grow the crop. There is another hydroponics which I'm talking now about is passive hydroponics, which you grow without the soil, which you grow in a grow media. And the best grow media available with us is the cocoa peat. Okay. So you could grow any crop. You could grow any crop commercial commercially in this in this media. You, uh, I'm not talking of the cereals and pulses and uh, fruit orchards. Okay, I'm talking of all the vegetables, herbs, um, berries, and of course um, a few a few plants of uh, papaya and lemon, which have been you know, uh, doing undergoing trials. You could do it for your uh, house or for your domestic purposes, but I don't think it will be of uh, commercial viability soon. They need, they need to do some more research and development in those areas for developing fruits. But yes, berries are grown. All the berries are grown in other parts. Sir, sir, sir yes. I, I need a suggestion, sir. Tell me. Sir, is there, is there any recommendation from your side to grow some specific type of vegetable in our home. Suppose I want to grow in my home some vegetables. Can you recommend those vegetables in hydroponics? Uh, which vegetables you use to tell me? I'll tell you yes or no. And it is yes for everything. Your tomatoes, yes. Cucumbers, bell peppers, eggplant, brinjal, okay, uh, leaves, amaranthus, okay, spinach, coriander, mint, uh, you could do um, wine crops, you could do gourds, you could do anything, you could grow anything. It's uh, it's not limited at all. Am I, have I answered your question? Yes, yes. Yeah, but I'm talking of passive hydroponics, okay? And if you're talking of active hydroponics, then okay, you are limited to grow only leafy oh. greens. You're limited with leafy greens, uh, lettuces, and uh, uh, okay. uh, and few other crops only. There is a limitation. Uh, hi, uh, my question is again regarding you know uh, propagation of uh, uh, you know uh, rosemary and thyme mm. using the stems. Can we okay. do that by you know uh, active or passive uh, you know? Yes, yes, you could do it by passive hydroponics. You could uh, directly cut the stems. It's just a normal, uh, normal propagation technique. Maybe you need to put some sort of uh, uh, rooting hormone, rootex or anything onto that uh, cut, and then uh, put it. Of course, the mortality rate is high. It would be, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe 40 to 50 percent mortality. But uh, you are not spending any sort of uh, uh, further money to buy your seeds, which are very expensive. Yeah. So you could uh, mortality will be high. But yes, you could do it, and we do it in the farms for commercial purposes. We do. Uh, we uh, we do the um, propagation through stems uh, cuttings for uh, rosemary. We do it for sage. Also, you can raise them in the NFT channels. Okay, but you will be occupying a lot of space in the NFT channels, and because it takes time and mortality is high, so you'll be occupying a lot of space, which is not economically viable. Instead yeah. of doing that, you could you know grow some other crop in the for a thirty day crop and harvest it and make money and sell. So that is a better concept to do uh, to raise the seedlings. I mean, to raise the uh, cuttings in your uh, nursery or in any uh, tray, in a pro tray, grow tray. Yeah. Uh, another clarification regarding, you know, uh, that uh, you uh, talked about the PVC pipes we are using in yes. India. You know, mm. uh, you told, uh, you know, it will leach or it, it won't leach. What is that? I just want to... It yeah. will leach. It will leach. The PVC okay. pipes that I use, it will, it will leach all the plastics, all the microplastics into your solution, into the water solution, because it contains high EC and pH, and then that will be absorbed into the plants. 
so what is the uh, you know uh, what kind of pipes yeah it is the pipes are meant for drainage purposes right there right. are no. nft grow channels okay grow channels they are called grow channels these grow channels are uh, made from polypropylene okay? Okay, okay they are like they uh, you know the uh, the refrigerator in your house right right inside there is this white thing yeah. inside the fridge so that is the typical material which is used and this material does not leak microplastics okay that it is has been, uh, it, that is is that puff puf the material PPE. white material pp okay pp okay. yeah. yeah okay okay thank you thank you it's not pe p is polyethylene this is right, right. polypropylene yeah. okay okay uh, but inside the refrigerator i think we normally use the pu i don't know what is the material puff, but it is the it is a similar material yeah, yeah similar puff material. material for uh, because you know, that is uh, used in the refrigerator. refrigerator and refrigerators are have been made since long and then uh, people okay. have changed to this because even then you know have these microplastics being leached okay. into your uh, okay, into okay. your food in the fridge okay 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 yeah. thank you so much yeah you're welcome sir Uh, sir, one more question before you are about to answer that question, sir. Kindly elaborate. Stressing of mention in time here. Uh, even I was also having the same doubt, sir. Mm -hmm. How can we increase the secondary metabolite uh, content by providing mm -hmm. stress in hydroponics? If we are in the field, we can stop irrigation. Then automatically, mm -hmm. secondary metab metabolite content will increase. Mm -hmm. In hydroponics, how we are going to provide stress to the plant? The, my, I also got the same doubts. <laughs> very interesting see in 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 hydroponics i'm talking of passive hydroponics okay uh, you can increase uh, the stress you know by simple technique of you know reducing reducing the ec okay number 1 number 2 decreasing the dli day light integral reducing the number of uh, light hours in your indoor vertical farm or indoor farms if you're using lights if you're talking of any sort of uh, greenhouse you could uh, you could reduce uh, the irrigation cycles fertigation cycles and then uh, make uh, some changes in your electrical conductivity that would give you a uh, lot of uh, lot of stress to the plants these are uh, experiments being conducted still that experiment which has been done in minnesota is uh, one of the papers which uh, uh, which they have used uh, to increase the uh, the secondary metabolite oh, yes, sir. In, yes, sir. in yeah in indoor it is very in indoor vertical farms it is very easy it is it is more convenient to do because you are having uh, most of the parameters under your control especially the you know the light and the co2 and of course uh, uh, the temperature and humidity so if you could uh, you know uh, play with these factors then you have uh, a stress being developed in the plant okay sir thank you sir and uh, one more question is uh, that can fruits like berries can be grown in the same method as of time in grow beds yes think you berries. already answered sir yeah yes, you sir. already answered yeah, like berries be grown yes sir and can we consider hydroponic crops as organic crops i i had mentioned that hydroponics is beyond it's organic beyond organic Uh, it's not, organic. We cannot consider as organic. See, uh, yeah, in the in the US now they have considered it as organic as as organic because they have uh, a big case been fighting all these years. But in other countries uh, in India and uh, Middle East uh, they are not being considered as hydroponic. But I termed it as beyond beyond organic because you know we don't have any sort of uh, pesticide residue because residue. we hardly use any pesticide. We don't have any sort of heavy metal residues in the crop. because it is completely made from the recipe so it is uh, more than organic yes sir uh, thank you sir next question is uh, could you elaborate a little on aquapon aquaponics and its uh, technical functions um okay you are in the wrong place i believe <laughs> this gentleman see i am into hydroponics uh, i don't have i have been doing but you know i just cannot give you a, um, a expert comment on aquaponics okay yes Uh, technical function same like you know uh, you do have um, denitrification units to be established because uh, the the fish the fish poop is converted uh, is uh, sent through uh, a machine which denitrifies and then goes back into your uh, grow bed wherever you are growing your lettuces so this is a closed loop circuit so the uh, the fish water is used for uh, uh, for raising the crop and i'm not an expert on that sorry Mm, till now, these are the questions in chat box, sir. 
uh, i request participants if you are having any other doubts you can ask directly sir hello hello dear yeah hi hello yeah. yeah and firstly thank thank you so much for your invitation let me introduce you myself i am miss e mo from myanmar i will attend to msc2 maharana pradesh university udaipa rajasthan and let and, and i i i'm researcher in department of agricultural research in myanmar Uh, yes i we our department test tests hydroponic solution and uh, for rice by using japanese system and and i collect the data at the length of the rules and and how many rules and how many rules and other spada especially uh, the, the the rice can be resistant by other spada and um, and then i know i know the land or rule is very very land more than others and um, um, simple simple growing yes gs uh, thank you so much yeah, for your right. learning yeah, very yeah. nice very nice i could understand your uh, enthusiasm for uh, hydroponics cultivation of rice it is uh, from such uh, entities and from such universities that you know people should come up with uh, new research and development yes uh, rice uh, as you said uh, the rice seedlings uh, these days are raised uh, by hydroponic methods and these uh, rice um, seedlings which are raised by hydroponic methods are distributed to the farmers to do their normal transplantation and uh, growing in their big fields in that fields so rice seedlings are grown hydroponically thank you so much yes sir thank you ma'am the participants uh, you can ask any few more questions if you are having yeah if there are no further questions uh, we can close uh, today's technical session and uh, thank you sir for uh, your nice presentation on two lectures morning session on uh, hydroponic technology future tools to feed the world and uh, later hydroponic cultivation to culinary helps i think uh, our participants got so much of technical knowledge about these two topics and tomorrow again we will meet uh morning 10:30 on our final session that is on microgreen cultivation using hydroponics thank you sir Th thank you very much and dear participants thank you for your patience and tomorrow kindly join morning 10:30 am yeah thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you sir thanks thanks take care bye bye bye